Welcome listeners to today's podcast. I have the exciting opportunity to interview a great friend of mine, Carlin Menser. She is a top 10 real estate agent on the peninsula here in Virginia. She's owner of the peninsula branch of Anchor Realty Group, married and not only just a married wife, but a mom of two kids, Wyatt and Willow. I don't know how she finds all the time to do, to do what she does, but uh, we're going to find out today. So welcome, Carlin. Hello, Paul. <laughs> we're so glad you're here today. And just a funny story you're telling me on the way over here. You just kind of <laughs> popped in here at the last minute to catch a plane to help out a friend, huh? <laughs> yeah, I, well, I have. I, I had a flight leaving out of Norfolk at 3.30 today. And so I knew that there was this shared workspace that had a podcast room. And so I was like, that's perfect. I'll leave at 1.00. I'll leave me, I'll leave at 12. I'll get over there. I'll do the podcast. I'll go straight to the airport. It's great. It's fine. And they don't have any air conditioning. <laughs> <laughs> well, you solved about 95% of the problems, you know, air conditioning. I mean, I'll never see those people in, next to the plane if I smell that. Right. <laughs> <Never seen> that. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Yes. All right. So that must've been what happened on my last flight anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so before we get into your, your stellar career in real estate, tell, tell us, tell us, how'd you get in real estate? How long you been oh, at? What started? It's Give us a the story. Great story. So all through like elementary, middle, and high school, I danced and I did theater. And as you know, that's a very lucrative career. And so I went to an out-of-state private college my freshman year and spent a lot of money and decided that, you know, it wasn't really what I wanted. And so I came home every weekend. And my dad was like, hey, you're spending all this money and you're never there. So long story short, I moved back home and I started working at a bank and I decided that I was going to be my own adult. No one was going to tell me what to do. So I <laughs> rented a house and quickly learned that it costs a lot of money to not live at your parents' house. And so I was trying to cash flow my degree. I was going to a community college. And I was doing like a two plus two agreement with the four-year college ODU that's here. And I got my associates in marketing and I was working on getting, I actually ended up getting a degree in business management and marketing before I did the two plus two. And I was looking for a marketing job and this big, bigger local real estate company, my cousin worked there and she said they were hiring someone in their marketing department. Mm. I was like, well, perfect. I'll go work there. And so I had to get my real estate license. So I know all the rules and all the laws of real estate and advertising and fair housing and all that fun stuff. And I, I don't know what I did there. <laughs> like I didn't really have a job title. I did like event planning and forms and I kept the agent document. I mean, I just had the most random job, but I had a real estate license and I was exposed to everything. And, you know, at the time it was just a bunch of grunt work and, you know, I was the low man on the totem pole and I just observed and I developed relationships and I started asking questions and I'm like, I can do this. Like I can totally do this. <laughs> and so it just evolved. And then I started helping the manager with corporate relocation. And that was like a huge eye opening experience for me. And then, you know, we all lived through <laughs> 2008. 2011. And I quickly, <laughs> I quickly was like, Oh my gosh, like this is some serious craziness going on here. But in the midst of all that, like my husband was on staff at a church and we were, we got married in 2009. And a big part of our beginning marriage was of course fighting about money. And so we went through Dave Ramsey's program and it changed our life. And so when all of that happened, I was like big on the agents in our office. You know, I'm a little brat, 23 year old telling these agents how to manage their money, you know? And so that didn't go over very well. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine so, that. But as I started selling real estate and as we started like really getting serious about generating and building wealth, like we wanted to share that with other people because we just totally found the freedom in that. And that's just kind of where it's all evolved from is I just quickly learned that, hey, if I could talk to these people and recognize like, maybe they're not ready. Like maybe they need to come back to me in a year or two years or whatever, you know, that I would have a much longer lasting impact on them and their financial growth if we didn't just rush into all of this. And I mean, now looking back, I'm like, what a blessing it was that I was like kind of exposed to the worst real estate market that ever happened <laughs> because yeah. it, it gives me a very cautious air, but also, you know, you're able to tell people like, it, it's not that bad. Like, like even through all that stuff, like this is how our area survived and this is how our area, you know, was, was 
hibernating almost from all of the madness that was going on nationally. Where I worked was with a lot of the top agents in our area. And I mean, we just had some machines and they were, you know, time blocking and I mean, Mm. just rocking and rolling. And so I learned a lot about what to do from them. I learned a lot about what not to do. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but I just would sit around and absorb all this information. And I'm like, I'm going to do that or I'm not going to do that, you know? And I think it just created this, you know, desire in me to really, really want to learn how to do everything really well. And so then in 2000, ugh, I want to say 11, I went over to Anchor. So I've been doing this for 17, seven, yeah, 17 years. Oof. All right. (laughs) Wow. I know. I know. I looked so much younger than. (laughs) (laughs) We won't do the math over here. It's okay. okay. It's fine. It's fine. fine. (laughs) I don't get AARP magazines yet. So I think I'm still good for it. Well, that's good. That's good. Yeah. I I haven't gotten there. Well, actually, I started getting their mail not too long ago, but I don't qualify yet. (laughs) Good. I don't know why they sent it to me. So, so that's, that's a pretty cool story. So you, so really you're, I mean, this whole experience of what do they call it today? Adulting, adulting early, right? Yeah. Leaving school, getting a house. I mean, you must've been like what, 18, 19 when you did that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you're like, so, oh my gosh, I've got, I've got electricity bills <laughs> and I've got rent. And then. Oh yeah. I mean, my, so one of my aunts, her husband, um, look like an accountant or whatever. He was the family tax preparer. And I remember the first time he did my taxes calling and being so mad. I'm like, they took social security. I don't even get social security. They took all this out of my check. <laughs> and he's like, welcome to America. This is <laughs> you know? And I was so bad, but yeah, it was, I mean, and I'm, you know, I'm super thankful that I had the opportunity as young as I did. Cause I worked at restaurants. I mean, I had all kinds of crazy jobs when I was in middle school and high school. And there was, there was one fun time where I wrecked both of my dad's cars in one accident. And that's a story for another time. I let my unlicensed friend run it. I had to go, I had to get my hair done. Well, there was very important things happening. (laughs) And, but anyways, to pay him back, I worked for a cleaning company Mm -hmm. and man, Once you do stuff like that, you're like, I will never leave anything a mess again. Like, I will never, you know, but I joke all the time. I'm like, if I hadn't worked for that cleaning company, I wouldn't know how to vacuum bees into my carpet, you know, like (laughs) vacuuming now. And I know how to clean a bathroom correctly. (laughs) (laughs) I think the fact that I got all those, you know, hard jobs out of the way when I was younger, it it just set me up to really appreciate the people around me that help with those things. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, there's a lot today. We There's so much, it seems like in, in culturally that today kids, and maybe it's the social media and all that, but they, they want to start at the top, right? And they want, mm-hmm. I'm sure you see this as a realtor. We see it on the loan side somewhere, you know, so a first time home buyer wants to buy, you know, the $2 million house, you know, and, you know, they, you know, they just started working or they haven't even started working yet, you know, and we, my wife and I, Becky, we'd always laugh because we, we, we used to like to really watch those those shows, you know, where they make over the home and then, oh, you know, they flip it. Right. And, and we're like, we're like, you know, they always had like the husband was a, was a, you know, he was a stay at home astronaut and the wife <laughs> paint painted, you know, art for a living. And we're like, Oh, what's and your sharpened budget? crayons. Right. It's, and then what's your budget? Oh, it's 2.3 million. And we're like, what? <laughs> you know, okay. Whenever you lost me there. Down, like I always tell our agents, I'm like, whenever you sit down with the first home buyer, the first rule is they should get pre-qualified. And the second rule is they're never allowed to watch HGTV again. Like it's uh, such a lie. Like, yeah, it's it's totally a lie. Totally a lie. And it's, <laughs> it's good. And you have to probably do a lot of setting people's expectations straight, don't you? Oh, gosh. I mean, that is honestly like being the emotional barometer and managing people's expectations is mm-hmm. 75 percent of the job and i jokingly tell people all the time because they're like well i can sell my house for sale by owner and like i can take pictures i'm like absolutely i'm like that's actually the easiest part of my job <laughs> i was like you know that's no problem at all because we hire people to do that <laughs> right. i was like but getting this thing to close and you and your wife still being married at the end that's gonna be a whole nother thing <laughs> we, have to, we have to get you to that point so, so you wear multiple hats, right? It's not just signing oh, a contract yeah. and yeah. I mean, what makes a great real estate agent? I mean, to be in the top 10 and have so much experience, I mean, you, you've seen it all. You, you've experienced a lot. 
not all maybe, but a lot. But I think you know what makes a great realtor. What, what do you see as the big characteristics? I mean, if I was going to be interviewing someone, I would want to know that they had the ability to maintain relationships, not just with, you know, me as the client. But I think a huge part of what I have thrived for is to maintain relationships with the other agents in our industry. Mm. It is incredibly difficult if there's a difficult co-broke on the other side and you don't already have a relationship. And when in this market that we're, you know, hopefully coming out of, it feels like we might be coming out of, it was imperative that, you know, I had relationships with agents because you had, you had no chance. I mean, the, the offers were already crazy. Everything in it was beautiful as far as money was concerned. And so, you know, I would sit down with my sellers and I would say, you know, apples to apples, the financials on these are identical. The big difference is one of these agents I've worked with before and they're great to work with and they are great at communicating and they don't miss deadlines and I know we're not going to have issues with them. This other person, you know, and I think that in our industry, it's super weird because they're not our coworkers, you know, like we don't have the right. same boss, but we still work with them all the time. And, and that's a huge part of our job. The other part of our job is just paying attention and learning how to play offense instead of defense because if you're playing defense in a real estate transaction you're too late and something's gonna go incredibly wrong um you know i have an amazing transaction coordinator she's like amazing which she, her, one of my funny stories involves her so we'll have to come back to her but you know one of the things that she is incredibly good at is ensuring that our timelines and everything are so proactive that we leave intentional room for things to go wrong because we know they're gonna go wrong you know and there's so many things that you can prevent from happening during a regular real estate transaction if you just effectively communicate and you do things in a, you know, efficient time manner. And so, that, I mean, that's one of the biggest things that we just really push on is ensuring that the transaction, like I, I generally tell my clients, I'm like, my job is to make it look like you're a duck going from one side of the pond <laughs> to the other and just smiling at everybody. And I'm the feet doing this the whole time. <laughs> right. Along, so that's right. Cool. Right. So. Because it's, because that's, that's a, you know, from a client standpoint, if, you know, buying or selling a house is, yeah, I forget the rank order of the most stressful events in your life, right? You know, giving birth, maybe dying is probably a stressful <laughs> event in your life. Depending yeah. on your faith. I don't know, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, right? But but buying a house, selling a house, it, that's that's a big deal. And there's there's I mean, it's a huge asset. It's a you know, you know, and it it's not like you can hit the reboot button, you know, 30 days after you engage in this transaction, right? So right. Yeah. you gotta make sure it's done up front. If you're transitioning in and out of an area or job, you got schools starting for kids, you got all kinds of things going on that, you know. It helps to, you know, I, somebody asked me on a, on a show the other day that I was a guest on about, you know, what I, the best advice I've gotten in business before. And, and I think it's a, getting a mentor, you know, or a coach or somebody that's a third party that kind of, you know, they can quarterback the situation. They're not emotionally involved in the, in, in the business that you're in, but they can give you guidance. And that's kind of what you are, right? I mean, you're a, yeah. on each of these transactions, you're a, you're a coach, you're a mentor, you see the field, you see all the players, you know, all the players. Yeah. Which makes it incredibly because because if I'm trying to do it myself, I don't know who is, you know, what or whatever. Right. I don't know. The, I don't know the minefields. I don't know the pitfalls. I don't know that, you know, you, you know, what questions to ask because you, you don't hear the dogs that don't bark. Right. So it's like, well, I don't know until I step into it. And so that's I mean, that's that's valuable. And, and you said the other thing I heard was margin. I keep hearing I keep hearing from you two, two things, relationships. And you talk about play offense. And it sounds like it's really it's. It's it's sort of people and systems, mm -hmm. kind of a combination of the two, right? Because you kind of need mm -hmm. both to make it to be a, a top producer or what I call the entrepreneurial agent, right? You're really yeah. building a business. Right. Yeah. And I mean, I recognize my weaknesses and I'm a terrible driver and I'm bad at, at details. <laughs> so, but I'm really good at hiring good people that are good at details. So uh -huh. I feel like that's one of my strengths. So we had a summer intern that started with us two or three summers ago, and we were at a team meeting. And Heather, my transaction coordinator, is so funny. I love her to death, and she knows me. I mean, we work like we're so close and so tight. She thinks what I, I mean. She knows me at this point, but she looked at him, and he, you know, he was a freshman in college, or I, I don't know, you know, eighteen, nineteen year old kid, and he had all these questions, you know, and he would wait until, you know, 
I was done with the meeting or whatever. And he would try to, he's like, I, I had all these questions for her. And she's like, you got to learn. She's like Amtrak. When she comes through here, if you don't get on and ask your question, you're going to miss the whole train. <laughs> like, he's like, you can't wait for her to come back and have a dull moment in the office because that's never going to happen, you know? But so, you know, I've taken, my speed is way different than everybody else's speed, but we need those people that go 20 and 30 miles an hour because there's stuff that you miss when you're driving down the interstate. You don't pay attention to the <laughs> side of the road. But if if you have those people in place and like the people that are on my team, they're not only good at it, like that's what they enjoy. And if mm. I, you know, they're team players. So if I say, hey, you got to do this today, you know, I know deep down, like they don't want to go talk to that person. Like they don't want to go meet this appraiser. <laughs> like, like I would sit there and talk to them the whole time and it'd be a great old time for me. And it's totally in my gifting, but they'll do it, but it's still like not their best use, you know, like it's just, yeah. it's hard to, but I'm like, stick to what you're good at. Like, let's just stay in our lanes. <laughs> well, and that's, I mean, that's, that's a lot of wisdom though. I mean, you know, and that's, that is the difference between having a you know, a highly paid job where you, you have to do everything. You're trading time for dollars. You know, if you don't show up, the world crashes versus having, we talk about, you know, having the right people, but on the bus, but then on, in the right seats, right? Yeah. So they're, they're in their gifted zone. You guys complement each other. You look out for, you don't want a bunch of Carlins. You only need one Carlin, right? In Oof. your team. Right. There'd be some tired, there'd be some tired people in our office. If there's one, one of me. I'm feeling it. I'm telling you. Wow. <laughs> tell you what no that's 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 awesome that's off awesome. now now you do residential but you also do commercial right i mean tell me yeah. what, what this is all about so they're both fun in their own right and you know one of the things that i really like i love you know the excitement of no day being the same day you know i love that everything is different and still people but everything is different mm -hmm. in commercial there's like far less emotion in it but there yeah. is still excitement because at the heart of it it's still a person it's still somebody making their dream a reality it's still yeah. somebody pushing a business and you get to see things like you know I've definitely met with people and they're like this is what I want to do you know I want to open up a coffee roasting art studio or whatever you know and you're right. like "Ooh, <laughs> how mm. is this gonna work and then it happens you're like huh well, you fooled me there, you know, but we have, you know, we have done so many fun commercial projects. We've represented a private school. We've done, um, like one of them was this girl that I've known for a long time and she was renting booth space and doing hair. And then she opened up her own studio and now she's, you know, she's getting booth rental from other people now. And I'm like, you know, this is, this is going to change the trajectory of your financial future. And you're not doing really anything different other than working smarter. You know, you're already paying for the space that you're in. Why not get a little bit more and generate that residual income that, you know, doesn't require you to go to work. And so, and, and with the commercial space, you, you would think that because it's less emotional and it's not, I mean, your house is your home. It's your safe mm. place. It's your largest investment for most people. It's more money than they've ever borrowed on anything else. And so even if they're the most financially sound people in the world, you typically have a, a mortgage of, you know, and so I think that the emotional barometer of that, you know, changes because it's their home in commercial, you know, you're, you're kind of, you're there for the excitement part of it. You're there for the part where they're like, oh my gosh, this is so awesome. And I'm going to make this thing a reality. You know, we've outgrown our space or we have totally, you know, busted our business at the seams and we're ready to open a second location or, you know, whatever it is. But, you know, that part of it is just, and I do like numbers. Like I love seeing, you know, <laughs> I, especially money it gets it's exciting <laughs> so and like my brain just works like I I showed a building you know I don't know two days ago or whatever and I knew that it was like 4,000 square feet too big for my client and we walked around and she loved it and she was just like I don't know I mean I'll just have all this extra space and I was like you're not gonna have extra space I was like we're gonna put a firewall in and you're gonna rent the other side she's like that's right. I'm like, yeah. I'm That's like, right. let me tell you the numbers. And even on a conservative base, look at this. And she's like, ooh, I like that. I'm like, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so just being creative and, you know, putting all the puzzle pieces together. And, you know, I go in and I cause this big dream of a storm and think of all these crazy things. And then, you know, I'm like, all right, well, you got to call this person to actually make that happen. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. So. 
Well, you're a vi- yeah, that's you're a visionary. I mean, I think that the cool thing is uh, with commercial because we do that too. Is the you know every project is different, right? And every person's. I mean, the home we we sort of have that. We know what that does, and we all have one, and it's critically important. And that's part of your dream too. But if you have a business, your business has to live somewhere. Right. And, you know, and it's like, well, if I'm going to own my own home and I'm going to pay, why would I rent a home for 30 years? If I know I have to live somewhere, if my business has to live somewhere. Right. Then why don't I own the building? And then maybe, yeah, I can rent some of that out. Let somebody else pay the freight. I have this great asset that, that over time is just going to appreciate in value. And then, you know, and, and it adds value to the business and I can do with it what I want to do. With it, right. Yeah. And I have all these people over the years who have been like, I'm going to sell my business. And, you know, and, and I look at it and I'm like, well, what are you selling? I'm like, mm-hmm. like, you rent your space. Most of us, especially small businesses, the value is in the, the person who's generating all this stuff. You know, if right. you're a mechanic, unless right. you have a building, like you are the value, you are the business, you know? And, and so I'm like, but if you have a building, mm-hmm. like you can sell your business or your book of business or whatever for some amount and be great for a little bit. But then when you're, you know, living it up in Florida or doing whatever you're doing, you still own that building. Somebody else come in there and still pay you rent, you know, like that's, yes. that's the beauty of it. And then when you're like, hey, I'm done being a landlord, you sell it and cash out. <laughs> that's right. So that's right. It's, you know, you hit on so many points. I mean, it, it's the value of the business goes up significantly with that building, the retirement stream, potentially the, the, the capital, you know, gain when you sell. It's just, it's just, it's just awesome. And, and, you know, it's, I can see someone like you liking to work in these different situations because they are all unique, right? Yeah. The stories are interesting. I have one right now. We're actually closing today. It's a commercial as a restaurant owner, and he'd been in that location for eight years. His landlord comes to him and says, I'm going to sell the building. He's like, oh, my gosh, I have I've built all my local clientele here. My business is based here. If I have to move, I don't know if I'll lose you know, 20, 30, 40 percent of my customers. I don't know where I could go build out the kitchen anyway. So they're closed today. They're going to, so for them, it was defensive, right? They get the, yeah. now they control their, their future versus being at the whim of somebody else's, you know, desire for a property or, or whatnot. Yeah. And, and seeing that side of everything makes me want to definitely for myself and encourage my clients. I'm like, if you're a good landlord and you take care of people like that, is going to take you so much for, and I don't know why those people are selling their building. It may not be something ill-willed or unintended, you know, yeah. but like if you're planning and you include your tenants in that plan, whatever that is, like you could maintain some sort of relationship with that person that's mutually beneficial and there's financial gain for both of you, you know, and I mean, long-term tenants are beautiful and there's always, and I tell people this all the time, there is always a place in time where it makes more sense to rent. Like, sure. I am not going to sit here and say to you on a residential or a commercial side that buying is the only, you know, it, there's no. tons of reasons why it makes more sense to rent. If you're trying on new business and you don't know really what your square footage, you know, absolutely. You need to yeah. rent. You don't need to buy them. That's right. But, you know, maintaining the relationship with the tenants as a landlord is a huge, easy thing to do to secure your financial asset. I mean, it's just like. Feel like it's common sense, but you would be surprised <laughs> at how non common that sense is. I get that. Yeah, I don't know why they call it common. You know, it's, <laughs> it's uncommon sense, anymore. right? No, it's definitely not anymore. That's hey, that should sure. be our book. We can write a book called Uncommon Sense. <laughs> uncommon sense. There you go. Well, speaking of that book, we're going to change gears here, and we're going to okay. get some. We're going to get some stories for that book right now. So, okay, I want, you, right. I want you to tell me some of your fun or <laughs> craziest real estate transactions. Or oh. <laughs> There's so many good ones, but the one that's about Heather. So Heather, my transaction coordinator, worked at a huge law firm and she was a paralegal and, you know, like wore, you know, very business attire. They have mm. policies, mm. you know, and, and then she comes to work for me and, <laughs> and I'm like, hey, you want to come to my living room and like get in the car? We're going, you know, like it's just total chaos. Yeah. And I don't know, maybe three months in, two months in, whatever. One of my investor clients was like, hey, I got tenants going out of this property. You know, I want to list it. I'm going to, you know, get this out of my inventory. Can you go 
and see, you know, what needs to be done to put the house on the market. I'm like, sure, you know, whatever. And, you know, I don't watch scary movies because my whole day is going to places where people could be hiding or jumping. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any of those mental images in my head. Right. But I don't ever, I don't ever put myself in weird situations or where yeah. I'm alone. And, you know, sure. so I, I was like, I need you to come with me. I need you to get in the car and you're going to come with me to this house. And she's like, okay. So we go to this house and it's trashed and it's a mess and it's going to be a mess and the yard's overgrown and everything's crazy. Well, I had like a very tight timeline per usual. I fit a lot of things in the day and my calendar does not have a lot of wiggle room in it. And I, get in my car and realize that we are covered in fleas, like all over my leg, oh. all over my arms, like everything. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> so I'm having to like brush these fleas off as best I can. And I, but I had, I had somebody come into our office to meet with me. Like I could not be late. And so she had not worked for me that long. And we got to the office. I'm like, I'm not bringing these sleeves in the office. And she's like, well, what are you going to do? Because she was going to go have a shower and change her clothes and be great. And I still had to be, be on, you know? <laughs> I was like, here's what we're going to do. I was like, I'm going to take my pants off and you're going to shake them out. <laughs> and so she literally tells everybody, she's like, yeah, we don't really have an HR manual. She's like, the first month I worked at Portland, handed me her pants. And I had to shake them out. <laughs> like, you know? And wow. I know. That's a good story. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's like welcome to welcome to the team. We're a family. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime anybody gets hired, I'm like, it's only a matter of time before I have to you have to do something very weird. Before you have to pull your pants off, you know, and shake them out, you know. We're 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 G rated here, but you might have to shake them off outside. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know, in twenty fifteen or twenty sixteen, when the market was a little bit different and I was working with a lot of investors flipping, I recognized that we had a huge shortage on staging companies in our area. And I was mm. so tired of dealing with their nonsense. Like they couldn't do stuff on time. They had old inventory. So I was like, you know what? This is over. We're starting a staging company. We're staging from nineteen eighty eight here. <laughs> right. So we started a staging company and I stage all my own listings and then I have we stage for other agents too. But we were staging, oh gosh, we were staging this house and we went down to check on it and there was a homeless man sleeping and living on our, on our staging furniture. Oh no. <laughs> <In this bacon>. <laughs> <laughs> My sweet little stager was like, there's somebody sleeping. <laughs> Did he have fleas? Did he have fleas? <laughs> no. No, no fleas. But I'm like. He probably needs this more than we do, but we're going to go ahead and give him all the sheets and stuff because we're never using them again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but wow. and, I mean, oh my gosh, the stuff that like, I joke all the time. My friend owns a very nice salon and she gets all the tea. Like she gets all the gossip all the time. You know, she knows everything. Oh, right. Everybody. Yes. Yeah. Um, well, I'm like, you think you know a lot about people. I was like, I always know first you know, <laughs> who's pregnant who's getting divorced like i know all right. of it because they call us and we and we go over there and so the yeah. things that we've heard on appointments oh my gosh <laughs> um, it's amazing you know i we hear it too and it's kind of funny because like uh people are interesting you know my wife is she works in physical therapy and she says she closes the door and the things that people just start talking to you know i mean it's just amazing when you get, into their you get into their life situation, and that's what you guys are, right? It's part of the yeah. life, right? You become that partner and, and you're a trusted advisor. So, you know, they, they trust you and they, they know you're not going to go on a, a podcast somewhere and talk about. Them. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but it's, sometimes it's genuinely helpful for us to know, because I always say, why yeah. are you moving? Like, I always ask the question. I'm like, what's your why? I need to know your why. And if they're starting a business, I'm like, I need to know why you're doing this business. I need to know why you're passionate about this or whatever. And then it naturally just comes out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Whatever. And and a lot of times it is for happy and great reasons. And a lot of times, like we walk with people through horrific situations, and you know, it's it is sometimes a very emotionally weight carrying position because you know people don't always sell for the happiest of reasons. Right. So, right. It, you know, when you're there's there's pros and cons to being at that you know relational equity level with people. Yeah. Yeah. But you're, you're totally invested with them. And I mean, I think you, you, to be, I think it's a reason why you're so successful is that you'll, you're willing to go there and be that person and, and, and try, cause again, what we started off with is such a, it's such an emotional, stressful experience yeah. for whatever reason, like you said, whatever the motivation is, even if it's super positive, it can be, 
is stressful. And if it's negative, that just, I can only imagine the compounding, you know, issues that deal yeah. with it. So Carlin, we're, we're about out of time. Okay. I can't believe it. I have like a list of other things that I want to talk to you about <laughs> and we'll have to do this again because I want to, I want to talk more about all your community involvement and things you do. Cause I know you're super involved there. You got a few other businesses that I've seen the pictures with the welding mask <laughs> and things like that, but 2.0. Yeah, 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 yeah. But t tell everyone, how can they get in contact with you or your team? You know, if they want to, they want to buy a house, sell the house they're in, or maybe they know somebody that's looking to do that. Yeah. Well, I give my cell phone number out to everybody, but we have, we're Anchor Realty Group Peninsula. If you want to follow us on Facebook, I'm Carlin757. On Instagram, I'm Carlin757. Facebook is kind of our inventory and a little bit more of our business page. Instagram, I love it to be our behind the scenes and you get to know all the personalities in our office and all the shenanigans that we're up to on a regular basis. So if you're in for some real estate, real estate comedy, I would post the Instagram page. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have TikTok yet? Are you set up there or? No, I mean, you have to, you have to limit yourself to how cool you are, Paul. <laughs> I, just, I just, I'm very aware of my cool factor and I just can't do it, you know? No, you've got a cool factor. It's higher than my cool factor. I'll tell you that for sure. <laughs> I'm like, I, I've tried to like pretend that I'm like, we we're, we make reels and I feel like that's, for my age, that's the most appropriate place for me to stay. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll go with that. So Instagram, <laughs> Facebook, and your phone number. Can we have your phone number? Yes. It's 757-879-9759. Awesome. And we'll get all this in the show notes as well. So it'll okay. be there. It'll be clickable. Okay. Click up Carlin. So, well, Carlin, this has been great. Yeah. We'll have to do it again. I can bring some friends along next time. <laughs> yeah. Maybe Heather. We want to hear about have some, the, maybe some more stories that Heather will tell us that you want. Uh, I wouldn't. She would tell you stories about me and I'm not going to volunteer that. <laughs> <laughs> Precisely why we'll have her on. <laughs> Have a safe trip today Thank in your flight you. to Indianapolis, I think you said, and, yeah. and we'll catch up soon. Okay. Thanks, Paul.